Now let's consider what is the phase difference between voltage and current in each one of the passive elements, resistors, inductors, and capacitors. But before that, let's have a conversation on jargon. Very often, if you hang out with power engineers or communication engineers, you will hear words like lagging or leading. Mostly in the context of this current is lagging or that current is leading. What do they mean by that? This is a red phaser that represents either a voltage or a current, a sinusoidal voltage or a sinusoidal current, and this yellow phaser represents some other voltage or some other current, sinusoidal as well, of the same frequency. Even though we represent them as stationary, in reality, phasers are not stationary. They are rotating like so, counterclockwise, at a constant speed at a velocity of omega radians per second, where omega is the angular frequency of the sinusoidal voltages or currents in the power system. In Canada, 377 radians per second, same as in the United States. If that is so, we can say that the red phaser is leading the yellow phaser. It is ahead of it. And that is what we say. We say, in this case, red leads or what is equivalent, we're saying that the yellow phaser is lagging, yellow lags. By leading by how much or lagging by how much? Well, leading or lagging by that angle, theta degrees or theta radians, our choice. We say more properly, red leads yellow by theta degrees. Or, which is equivalent, yellow lags behind red by theta degrees. I know what some of you may be thinking. Well, that is fine, but could I not say, instead of saying that red is leading yellow by theta degrees, consider the external angle and say that yellow is leading by 360 minus theta? Yeah, using this angle? Not really. The convention is to use the smallest of those two angles. So, these days, and these days. Let's apply that piece of jargon to the situation in inductors, capacitors, and resistors. In an inductor, represented here, if the current is I, a sinusoidal function of time, let's find what is the voltage. The current is given to us. It is a sinusoidal function of time with a given frequency, omega radians per second, a phase shift alpha, and an RMS value I. To find the voltage in the inductor, we count with this expression. V equals L D I D T. We know the inductance of the inductor, L. We know the current I as a function of time. We differentiate. We find the derivative of the current. The derivative of this sign is omega cosine omega t plus alpha. So that derivative is omega L I root to cosine of omega t plus alpha. It is not advisable to have a combination of sines and cosines within the same phase or problem. Choose either to write all your voltages and currents as sines or all of them as cosines. I'll write them as sines in this case. We'll remember that if this is a sine wave, the cosine wave has exactly the same shape, amplitude and frequency, but the cosine reaches its peak 90 degrees ahead of time with respect to sine. So we say that in reality cosine of x is just sine of x plus 90 degrees or pi over 2 radius, which is equivalent. Let's utilize this expression in here. The voltage in the inductor in that case can be written as a sine function of time as omega t plus alpha plus 90 degrees. Of course, all of these uh, hoops are just to write this properly so that this is radians. We say that in an inductor, the voltage is ahead of the current by 90 degrees. Or, which is more common, we speak of the current and we say, in an inductor, the current is always lagging behind the voltage by 90 degrees. That is what we say. In an inductor, the current lags behind the voltage by 90 degrees. Let's see that on the oscilloscope. 
graphically in an oscilloscope this would be the voltage and this would be the current and we see that the current reaches its peak 90 degrees after the voltage but we've seen that already if this is the phasor that represents the voltage in yellow, the phasor for the current is 90 degrees behind. And that situation is always true for an inductor. The current lags by 90 degrees. We will utilize this in exercises and in analysis of real problems very often. In the capacitor, again, we're given the voltage. We want to compute what is the current. And we are told that that voltage is a sinusoidal function of time. That voltage has an RMS value of V, a frequency omega radians per second, and a phase shift of beta radians. How do we find the current? Using this expression, the current in the capacitor is C dV dt. We differentiate the voltage, and this is what we obtain. But again, we don't want to have currents as cosines and voltages as sines. Let's write everybody as a cosine. For that, we make use of the same expression. We say, in reality, cosine of x is sine of x plus 90 degrees. We use that here and say the current in the capacitor has the shape omega LV, that is the RMS value of the current, root 2 sine of omega t, the same frequency, of course, but a phase shift that is 90 degrees more than the phase shift of the voltage. So we say that in the capacitor, the current is leading the voltage by 90 degrees. That is always the case. Let's have a look at that on the oscilloscope. This is the way things would look on the oscilloscope for a capacitor. This would be the voltage in the capacitor and the current in the capacitor. And we observe that the current is leading by 90 degrees. Fasorially, we say if this phasor represents the voltage, the current is represented by a phasor that is 90 degrees ahead of the voltage. And that is always true for the capacitor. The current leads by 90 degrees. For a resistor, voltage and currents have exactly the same phase and are represented by parallel phasors in the phasor domain. There is no phase shift between voltage and currents in a resistor, and I leave that to the viewer to demonstrate. Thank you very much.